So we have Professor Dawn Sim of Moorfields Eye Hospital. Dawn, welcome. Great to have you. Um, so Dawn is also a co-founder at MTHK. And Dawn, together with Marcus and Alex, have put together the uh, online eye test on the MTHK website, which is based on the OSDI test. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about the OSDI test and, and what it does? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so we chose the OSDI, which stands for Ocular Surface Disease Index Test, because it's a well-validated score. And in fact, it's used in clinical trials for new products to see how um, people you know, respond to to um, to new medications. So the Ocular Surface Index uh, Disease Index, or the OSDI, quite a mouthful score, is not um, just just a questionnaire. It is something that's been tested and shown to be able to measure how dry your eyes are. So it has um, of not to 100, there are 15 questions. It rates you as normal, mild, moderate, or severe dry eye. So the higher the score, the drier your eye. And this is important because it allows you to gauge um, what you need to maintain or improve your eye health. So if you have a mild dry eye, then perhaps just using a spray or drops or both um, occasionally, um, a couple times a day is sufficient. But if you have a moderate to severe spectrum, then you might need more frequent application. And I would recommend definitely using the drops um, with a, a, a kind of a supplement of the spray if you have moderate to severe dry eye. In that category as well, what you would need is supplementation or um, ensuring your diet allows you to produce more tears because you can't be dropping you know every five five minutes it's if you have very severe dry eye sometimes i tell my patients to put it in every 15 to 30 minutes if they're working on a computer so this scale is not only important to help you judge where your eye health is but it also charts you over time and you might find in the winter months that your eyes are more dry because of central heating. Um, or you might find in the spring your eyes are more uncomfortable and uh, because you have hay fever. So it allows you to track yourself uh, over time as well, which, which is why I think there is good value in uh, doing the OSDI. What would be interesting for us is if you would mind explaining to us, so as we grow up from, I guess, young children to teenagers to going on to uh, 20s, 30s, 40s, middle age and onwards, what should we expect to happen with our eyes? It's a very big question. Um, lots of things. So I'm not, not going to talk about sight here because that's a, a, a quite a big topic. But I think if we talk about how our eyes feel, which is mainly due to the surface of the eye. I, I like an aging of the eyes with you know, something we can see more clearly, aging of the face. So, you know, I, I never used to have so many wrinkles. Um, things change as you get older. The um, the collagen or the, or the proteins that make up the surface of your skin, but also your eyes change. They're not as elastic and robust as they were before. And in the eyes, similarly, the skin that covers the eyes is transparent and we have different types of skin that covers the whites and the clear bits. And these layers are not as um, uh, bouncy and healthy and elastic as they were before. So that's a very simplistic way to look at it. These layers also need is um, good lubrication. So we have, we have glands all on the side of the eyes as well as on the eye, as well as on the lids that produce tear oils, that keeps the skin of the eye healthy, smooth, and clear. And as uh, age comes on, hormonal changes, not just in women, but also in men, because testosterone or androgens have a big impact on our glands. And these will change, so tear production falls as you age. So if you do a test like the OSDI, um, it allows you to track how you're doing over time, which I think is important. The changes can be subtle at first, but they, they become exponentially different, um, particularly in your 40s and 50s. 